Crazy Fox Fitness, young man, how are you? You uh, doing it? Really enjoying the this? Thank you. Thank you. This set. Oh, thank you, man. You got, you're a good dude here, man. At your school for the ones like myself who cannot travel to your school. Well, doing my best to get stuff out there for you. It's an older video, but I'm really doing my best best to get that stuff out of you. That's why I'm doing the YouTube and giving all this stuff out because I think it's time we need to change the things on this planet. This isn't this is this is about what I think we need to do for the future of mankind and whatever, if mankind is even going to be a species on this planet. I think the only different, uh, those that are going to be the raw food babies, uh, the raw food moms and dads, you, you guys are kicking butt. And even if you're not perfect with your kids, don't sweat. It's going to be a lot of generations before we can be better. Uh, we, have to, we have to get farming up to speed. We, we're not going to be enough food for everybody once we realize that the tropics has the secrets. So it, it's just, this is a whole mass growth here has to take place here and I think we're all very a part of the fairy dust people that throw this on and hopefully man will just suddenly wake up out of the sleep state and um, can wake up a little bit here. I have found the people uh, I have found the people I try to help starts off so basic eliminate dairy and meats and get those fruits and berries and I think that's pretty basic too. Uh, get off the meats, get off the dairy products uh, all the proteins when you're detoxifying at least. I think you can skid by with some uh, coconut once in a while and some pine nuts once in a while, but I wouldn't probably interfere with any other nuts as you go along there. Like I said, one of my theses, I had, my school had four theses that you had to have, which I thought was a little too much, but I appreciated it later on. But I tell you what, I, it was a, four theses was a lot. The one I picked, uh, we got to pick one that, uh, of course, for our own uh, main thesis, and I picked the geographical location of proteins and minerals and the like. I can't remember exactly my heading for that. But it, it's evident when you look in the tropics, you have just sand. You have, of course, uh, the sun is acidic, so you, you have low protein food. As you get into the colder climates, you have a higher fat food, higher protein food. Maybe that's where medical doctors look at that. They consider us more northern beings than tropical beings, which they need to turn that around. And I understand even in living northern climates, you have to eat more tropical because eating, eating northern climate diets will end you sick no matter what. So uh, I think that's right. I think eliminating your, your meat and your, and your dairy products are first things first. Uh, we had just have people here that are suffering so much that it's, it, I jump you pretty quick into these higher levels. You don't have to jump that quick, but you know, it's like Rita in pain. When someone's in pain for, for six years, or some of you haven't been out walking, like uh, Kelly hadn't been walking, now she's walking and driving her car. So uh, there's a lot that uh, some of you haven't been doing that you are now doing. And I think that goes a lot to say for this level of work that you're, that you're on. And it's just amazing, your testimonies. And so I do kind of get a little strict here, but I, I, you see the reason why. So you're right on here. You're dead on, man. In your diet, I find most people need that simply to get started. Then I direct them to your YouTube. Yeah, I, I, yeah thank you, crazy like a fox, man. You are crazy and a smart dude. You're doing right. You're doing right on. You're right on, man. And I really appreciate that in you too. Appreciate your your past comments too. I I don't miss anything up here, guys. Uh, so I really appreciate all of that. But. Uh, whatever you can do with people. I, I, I think it, even if a person just eliminates meats and dairies and they just kind of halfway bump down the road, okay, what a, what a step. You know, just to break that old consciousness and go, wait a minute, there is another reason. If we can keep training and building that in consciousness, then we'll quit raising food for meat. And at that same time, we're eating better, we'll regenerate these things, and this, this whole shift of consciousness will take place, and everybody's good, and it won't be anything to argue over. Alicia West, one, have you ever found a cure for uh, anismus? This is a, a spastic pelvic floor syndrome. Wow, I've never heard of it. A spastic pelvic floor syndrome. Anal sphincter, uh, oh man, a uh, malfunction of the external anal sphincter and uh, puborectalis muscle. 
during defecation. Normal BMs involves relaxation of both these muscles. Malfunction involves their uh, failure to relax. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or their uh, paradoxical increased contraction causing constipation. Incomplete BMs. I eat 100% raw, high fruit diet five years and still suffer. Doc told me to do uh, uh, Kegels, but has not gotten any better. Well, you could take the antispasmodic on your road to Wellville. I'd probably add the new brain and nerve formula in there and start strengthening my nervous system. Spasticity always comes when acidosis sets in and then the loss of calcium and then the spastic and the cramping of the structure, even neurologically. So you want to get your adrenal glands on. Uh, that's the autonomic nervous system. That's the nervous system that we're talking about here. So you want to strengthen the adrenal glands. Of course, at the same time, you're going to get the kidneys because you're going to move lymph, knowing that acidosis is at the core of pelvic spasms, at the core of all of this. But just remember the side effects that pile on when you have the resulting acidosis, from cholesterol cracking to calcification, the loss of calcium and structure, the spasticity of that resulting structure, the cramping of the sphincters, or the opposite, the loss of connective tissue and the loss of the sphincter altogether where you can't hold it at all. You know, you got two different ways this can go on you. So you, you just got to go down to that road to Wellville. That's why you've been that long on herbs and uh, or on fruit and you see that that's why I like the herbs. I definitely get in the stomach and bowel and get me one that'll help to gently keep that peristaltic moving all the way to the sphincter. Uh, all of that uh, opened up. Uh, just get just getting all that lymph moving in the gut wall, and that includes rectal wall. Total ton of colorectal cancers out there. A lot of tumors right there in that rectal wall. A lot of hemorrhoids. A lot of weaknesses in that area. A lot of acidosis in that area, and. You just have to keep moving that lymph, getting those kidneys and adrenals. That'll get the autonomic up. But you could take the new brain and nerve, take the antispasmodic for that, and see if that'll relieve and relax that sphincter because it should. And uh, that's where you could do a little short rectal insertion of heal all T. And if you're a female, you could go through the vaginal way and do it there too and really clean all that out. But uh, I would do that for sure. Yeah, uh, definitely get into those areas and move those up. Get up that nervous system, too. And you might check around and see if you might have a parathyroid weakness. Do you have too many veins, uh, spider veins or varicose veins? Do you have hemorrhoids? Do you have brittle fingernails? Do you get depressed? Um, do you sag anywhere? Do you have prolapsus anywhere? Do you have skeletal problems anywhere? Because... Utilization of calcium would help the spasticity. At the same time, if you're highly acidic down there, you could get calcification of the sphincter. So, again, getting that body moved from an acidic state to an alkaline state, you can be on wrong. This is what I love about the herbs. It'll really turn, get, get everything moving, get the kidneys filtering and everything. And I suggest you, you go down that road, check your urine for settlement, and really go after that and see if you can get that moving well. That'll move all the acids out. By you popping up your parathyroid, it'll get more calcium utilization. Both of those will help spasticity. Getting the adrenal glands up will increase the autonomic nerve performance, which will then create a less spasticity uh, uh, problem that way. And, and, and as you get the, the lymph cleaned up in the bowel wall, you'll have a normal continuing peristalsis, and everybody's good. But these are some of the things that people are running into. And, you know, specific areas that you don't see a lot are now invaded a lot. A lot in the palate you didn't see before. A lot of tumors in the head and neck area you didn't see before. So a lot of these things are increasing, but there is remedy. I definitely get up on the herbs and go in that direction, though, like we've been talking about. Get in the lymph system. Get into the, uh, the lymphatic one capsules for your colon. The stomach and bowel capsules give you a liquid, say, lymph node 2. Definitely tear up the kidneys, the adrenal glands, and really get yourself opened up there. Again, a little antispasmodic could help that, but also the new brain and nerve will feed the nervous system, and et cetera, et cetera, and go down that way, and you'll be okay. You'll work yourself out of it in a much faster, timely manner. And I guess you could say this is kind of the story with glandulars, too. You can, you, can, you can use herbs for a long time, and the glands just seem to be okay, and you use a glandular, and boom. 
Uh, this is uh, Najab. I am confused by your acid base terms. An acid has a positive charge of hydrogen, it's called a cation. A base has a negative charge, absolutely, and is called an anion. So, why do you refer to an acid medium as an anion? Uh, an anionic medium, though, is an acidic medium. It does create that, that, that electrical medium, an anionic medium, which is more of a coagulating medium. It's funny when you look at a catabolic and anabolic versus anionic and cationic. Uh, you almost want to follow that same way of thinking, but it's opposite there. And so, you, you know, I've always been confused there myself when you look at the difference between catabolic and ana anabolic and opposed to cationic and anionic. So it all becomes uh, a little confusing when you're trying to understand the mediums and the electro electromagnetic mediums that these things uh, are creating on you. So it's interesting, I know. It can be very confusing. It still is to me in some ways. Uh, one of these days, I've got an old chemist that wrote a book that he only took a few people in his class. And I have his book at home, and he really tore that up. And I'll give you that book and the name if you can even find it anymore. But he would only take a few people at his class. He was probably the smartest chemist on this planet. Uh, I think he's passed. We haven't been able to get a hold of him lately. Uh, but in terms of explaining detoxification through chemistry and getting right into the variances and all that, he's he was the top-notch person to do that. Me, myself, and I... These years, I don't want any, I, I don't have any care anymore about any of that, to be honest with you. It's just, uh, it's just so much in man's chemistry and physics that we just don't know. So, you know, I, I do tend to, uh, to just try to keep it simple. I, I really do. But I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can help you more with that. Uh, this is M-A-U-R-I-C-9-9. Hi, honey. Uh, skin problems. Uh, she's 40, I'm 44 years old, and I used to have a clear body skin except for a small bout of uh, keratosis uh, on the back of my arms that I have had for as long as I can remember. I'm sure it started in my teens. That uh, KP, as they call it, wasn't a problem for me as it was barely noticeable. However, as of 204... Uh, 2004, the situation just became acutely bad. Wow. The KP started spreading to the side of my arms and down to my forearms and has been spread to my thighs, calves, and buttocks, and it's starting on my back. The redness and bumps are so unsightly that it has made me self-conscious. I don't wear shorts, and I try to wear long sleeve shirts. It's just ridiculous if I had clear skin for so long. Well, but underneath that skin, in the subcutaneous levels... You just probably had all this lymph just building and building and a little at a time now expressing itself to suddenly it's popping out all over you. You know, our lymph system, sometimes we don't know it's backing up for years. And then suddenly we get a picture of that. If you can get a picture, we can look at your eyes and see how bad your lymph system is. Uh, but your skin remembers just being a port. And so if you want to change the nature of the skin, you have to change the nature of your kidneys and adrenal glands. So you got to get in and get your kidneys healthy. you got to get your adrenal glands up. And everybody's good. And your skin will clear up. You can use the skin formula, but I would just clean out my, uh, get my kidneys filtering, get my adrenals up to get my kidneys filtering and move my lymph. Clean up the bowels. Clean all that up. And your skin will clean up. I never had a skin condition, ever, no matter how bad the psoriasis was. I, I've never been able to not clear that up uh, because these are the causative factors. There's nothing else that's causative to that. And at the same time, you can stay on parasite M and keep the, getting rid of any microbes that could take advantage of that system.